back, everyone. We are at the 2015 European Road to BlizzCon, and with me on the stage are our four qualified players who are going to play in our Hearthstone World Championship at BlizzCon. Why don't we give them a round of applause? Now each has received their plane ticket to Southern California. Each of them will be going to BlizzCon. And I want to know, Nairia, what does this mean to you to head to BlizzCon to represent Team Liquid and to finally get your chance on the world stage? It's my dream, Bible thump. There was a literal tear on your cheek. It's beautiful. Oskaka, you're headed to Anaheim and I don't want to shock you or anything, but there is a literal cheesecake factory there. How do you feel about going to Anaheim? Pretty hyped for cheesecake. Pretty hyped for cheesecake. Now, boys over here, life coach, Tice, I love you guys together. You have been celebrating your mutual victories on this stage, and it warms my heart. So, life coach, what does it mean to go to BlizzCon with Tice, who you've been playing alongside all year and succeeding alongside? Well, that's really awesome, and, um, well, to be honest, I would have gone to BlizzCon anyways, but it's definitely a small difference whether to, to be on the main stage or whether to watch the main stage. And I also really have to say that I'm also really happy for Oskaka because like, he simply like, refuses to stream and now he cannot like, duck himself any longer. So now we will see full exposure. Absolutely. The, pro the pros always told me that you were fantastic. Now the fans get to see it for themselves. And Tice. You're going to BlizzCon. You've worked so hard for this all year long. Is this a culmination of all your hard work? I think so. After last year and now all the practice we put into it, I'm really happy we both made it. All right. Well, now we got all the BlizzCon stuff out of the way. Did you know that we also have a tournament for the European Hearthstone champion and that you guys are the only four left in it? What would it mean to be the European Hearthstone champion? Each of you, only a few words. But please, your answers. It's cool to be first European champion. Pretty cool. I mean, BlizzCon is the biggest deal, but even this is like, it's a pretty big tournament still. Well, actually, I, I think it's rather important that like, we as Europe, as a team, challenge the World Championship. And the better we do at the World Championship, the, be the better it is. I mean, today here, that's a nice to have, but uh, it's rather about BlizzCon. How about you, Thais? It will be a really amazing bonus, but I'm already happy with what I got. Well, I'm happy that you guys are happy. But to make me more happy, I'm going to make you play more Hearthstone. So I'm going to give it back to the casters. These guys will all be playing their matches here on the stage tonight. And tomorrow, we will have our European Hearthstone Championship Finals. Don't go anywhere. Thank you very much, Rachel. So a few words from our European representatives to the Hearthstone World Championships. A big welcome to anybody who joined the stream. You missed, well, the, the, the whole portion of leading up to the qualifying process, but you get to see who is going to begin to be crowned the European Champion. My name is Frodan. I'm joined by Savita Nimsh, uh, who will be cast in the next series. We have, uh, I believe, Nyria versus Oskaka first, as we do have the first seeds playing the second seeds from the respective groups. Uh, how, do, how do you feel like, uh, you know, we've come so far? We didn't really get to talk too much about the top four, but when I looked about, like, looked back on the four representatives that we have, these are four of the most well-known players and four of the most respected players in the entire world. Absolutely. I think we have a fantastic top four, and we've seen the character of those players, Oskaka refusing to stream and, you know, being uh, pushed on a pedestal right now, and, and he is he is famous, he's getting famous, and life coach, great community person, uh, but uh, even if they say they don't care that much about the title, I'm sure they do. Everybody uh, wants to be the European champion. They, they would like it deep down inside. I think they've been so focused on this idea of qualifying for BlizzCon that maybe it's become uh, forgotten in a way, but now that they're going to be playing for it and there's some money on the line, for sure, there's definitely going to be uh, something that they want to play for additionally. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I mean, uh, right now they're also like competitive players, so even if they play, and uh, they, they're, they are going to give us great performance. Those are the top four European players, and they're going to play against each other. I'm sure we're going to see some great Hearthstone. Yeah, I think I would have been laughed at if I said this is going to be the top four. The four because uh, there's so much RNG in the game, blah, 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 Battle of the Shredders. <laughs> but th these players, they, it's not a coincidence they made it this far. It's really impressive, I think. Uh, every single one of them played in the Archon League, very well known. It's, it's a pretty cool top four, I would say, and the European title, European champion title, is definitely something to fight for. That's gonna, that's gonna be with you forever. 
I, I don't think that these guys should like just relax and like do some goofy stuff, try out new things, make weird plays. It, it's a it's a big title to have. Actually, Absolutely. I wouldn't be surprised if that would be the top four of the World Championships as well. All right, well, uh, I mean, that could happen, although I think a very specific set of scenarios uh, in order for that to transpire. We'll, we'll see. Well, well, I mean, we'll wait for BlizzCon. It's still a month away, so let's not get too carried away. In the meantime, let's take a look and recap of how we got here. We started off today with eight players, two groups, four players each, and only two were able to advance. We started off today with two Na'Vi players of Oskaka versus Hoy. Uh, that ended up in Oskaka's favor. He unfortunately was not able to overcome Tice uh, in that winner's portion, but Tice was able to grab that. Uh, but he did end up redeeming himself through that runner-up match. So a big shout-out to Maverick as well, as uh, he did get this far, but unfortunately there has to be a fourth-place finisher. I didn't think it would be at Maverick. I actually pegged him as one of the people advancing. That's surprising to me. Um, what, what do you think went wrong there? Well, you know, it, when you have eight players and all the players are at the same uh, skill level, at some point it's just uh, who has a different lineup. So Maverick brought Mage. We haven't seen any, any games, but maybe Mage was the, the downside of his lineup, and maybe he lost because of the Mage. He didn't only bring a Mage, but I heard that it was actually a Dragon's Mage, and I'm no, so sad now that we what? didn't get to see it on the main stage. Uh, but, um, see, Maverick's so uh, cool. Like, he just brings different decks, and he gets number one uh, in the point system. No big deal. Better luck next year, man, as well as Hoy. In Group B, we also had a pretty interesting set of events as Life Coach lost his first series against Nairia and had to fight through the loser's bracket. Uh, Nairia was able to continue on that mantra. It was like, well, I beat Life Coach, I might as well advance. End up doing so. And of course, the, the, the group finished with uh, one of the most dramatic conclusions to a series I've seen yet. It's Life Coach versus Pavel, where uh, that Druid versus Handlock game, that one sears my memory. Uh, with freshness. We didn't get to see Jira uh, on stream at all. Uh, just in the interest of time, we wanted to condense everything. Um, but, Actually, you know, I have some news about that match because you oh, said okay, like Pavel versus Life Coach was one of the most dramatic matches that we've seen, and that's true. But Jira versus Life Coach was really dramatic as well. It took two hours to finish. They finished with the uh, with game five, Druid versus Druid, and it was an absolute mirror match. They were playing the same cards, but Life Coach just continued being uh, a bit ahead for the whole uh, game, and he took the match. Really cool stuff. Uh, I believe uh, we, we definitely have at least the recordings of it, so we can go back and, and track uh, what happened there. Let's take a look at the final bracket of the four remaining players to see how it's actually going to go. We did mention that Naria is going to be playing Oskaka, I guess on the bottom side of the bracket, not really a big deal. Tice will have to play against his teammate Life Coach, and this is going to be single elimination. We're going to play two matches tonight, followed by the grand finals tomorrow. That's the way the European Road to BlizzCon happens on the final day. We're going to have the grand finals of each match. But first, in order to get there, we have Nairia versus Oskaka. I'm really excited to see that match. And uh, I, I'm ex exactly uh, surprised that there is this Dragon Priest, and I want to see how it's going to do against someone else than Hoy. Yeah. The story that sticks out to me, uh, before, right before I hand it off to you guys to cast this match, is that three out of the four players brought the lineup that everyone considers to be the most dominant. The Druid, the Warlock, and the Warrior. Um, specifically having Handlock, too, as that Warlock deck. Because Druid's kind of, you know, Druid. Uh, and people, a lot of people play Patreon. Game number one's about to begin, so Good. enjoy, guys. And I hope you like Druid versus Patreon, because it's about to come up here. Thank you so much, Fred. All right, let's go. We've seen this a few times today. Well, Druid versus Patient. Uh, well, I mean, Patient is the deck that is uh, favored. Yep, I mean, it's a close call. It depends who you ask. But with these hands, I would say that the Patient is looking quite strong. That combo and the Inner Raid, Big Game Hunter. Inner Raid, obviously good. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. What do you do with this? I mean, one inch on the floor from the top would change absolutely everything. He, he could just double Inner Raid on turn three. Get the five, I get those extra draws, but if he doesn't find card draw fast, he might be in trouble. You can't even tempo BGH. Yeah, I mean, he could innervate, innervate Force of Nature to take the early lead, but I don't think. Steal th six damage to face? Yeah. I don't, th <laughs> I don't think <laughs> we're going to see that. Oh, man. Well, Shapeshift is the way to go for the early turns. Absolutely, with this hand. But as a recap for the match for the viewers who are joining in uh, us right now, this matchup goes. Either way, it depends uh, who has um, what opening. Druid wants to have the minions early. Druid wants to set up the board before Patron is going to explode with the green Patrons and summoning minions. Uh, on the other hand, 
on Nyria side. He wants to play Grim Patron as fast as possible and get uh, some dwarves in the board. Frothing Berserker early is also a nice play from his side. Yep, sure is. Oh, the Wrath. He kind of wants to cycle the Wrath, but Frothing Berserker is not exactly what you want to cycle it on because it, it only gets bigger. So what do you do? Like you get to just tempo big game hunter. It, it's nice to weapon, yes, but the coin is spent. So unless there's exactly fiery war axe, it, it might get a trade with the frothing. So if there is a fiery war axe, it's turn three. So Nyria will have to kind of waste the charge because he want to play Death Sprite on four, possibly. With this hand, he might not want to, and it's still fine to have the fiery war axe for the potential shredder on turn four. It's funny how there are not that many targets for Beacon oh, Hunter no. apart from the Frothing Berserker, and he is targeting Frothing Berserker right now with that Beacon Hunter. Yep, and there's the Fighter War and the down goes the Beacon Hunter. Ostkaka desperately needs some minions here. Any spell would be a bad draw. Is there any specific minion? Oh my god. <laughs> what is going on here? Double Savage. Well, he can double combo at some point, and that's 22 points of damage. I, I would probably just. No, I don't know. It feels so bad. It's just kill that off, I guess. Yeah, deal three, dude. It feels important to cycle here, try to find those card draw minions, but you can't really just draw that for one and uh, potentially draw a blank. Absolutely. That only would enable the battle rage for Nairia. What if Ostkaka picks up a Shade of Nextramus? I mean, I guess in theory they could do some crazy things with that hand afterwards, but still. Because you know, the, he, he can combo out on turn eight. Right? On 8, he'll have 12 mana, he'll be able to cast Force Nature Double Savior. So on turn 8, he is able to deal 22 damage just from the combo. Yeah, but I mean, he needs to get the warrior down to 22 first and wait a few more. Oh, that is so rough for us. This Osaka. means he can do it on turn 7. So if the, on the next turn, if he actually picks up Shade of Nextramas, he might be able to win with that. Muskaka just keeps drawing the spells. This is a nightmare. He's just laughing at it. Yeah, it looks like it is. Like, oh well. He didn't make it to BlizzCon already, but I mean, you still want to fight till the end here and try to become the European champion. Yeah, we, we are talking about European champion, but also like for the first place there is $10,000, second place 5000 and then third and fourth um, 2500 Right, so the money difference is 7500 <laughs> It's nothing to laugh at. Absolutely. It's good money and uh, title on the line as well, so you don't want to end up in a situation where you just have a bad draw. There is engine of war. Yeah, but Neri with double executes waiting. But if you host Kaka, I mean, you just have to play. There's no way he can really do anything else. If Oskaka will have a couple of more minions, Neri doesn't have um, a fast hand. Like, yeah. he doesn't have uh, Froddings, he doesn't have Warsong, he doesn't have Patience. Yeah, if Oskaka picked up that shade that you mentioned, he would be uh, pretty close to just lethaling next turn. All right, there is a patron. Yeah, but can you do it here, though? I would expect to just see uh, maybe like a... Oh, slam on the Acolyte. Very nice. And then probably trading that one in and then executing. Yeah, he absolutely... Another slam. Absolutely needs a, a couple more cards. Yep. Might slam here again just to cycle if he wants to, but then he would miss the armor up, so maybe it makes more, more sense to just, uh, just do the armor up here. He knows that something is up here. Ostkaka hasn't been playing much, <laughs> what? much at all as with so many cards. Oh, oh, oh and, the, and he gets a rough. He can't even cycle it. How bad can you even draw? <laughs> Six cards Poor in this Skaka. hand. Eight mana, and he goes hero power passes a druid. And they really just laughing at it. There's no. like nothing. But then again, it's just the first game. So even if Ostkaka loses this one, that is true. He's, he's still in a good position. And it's not over yet. He might pick up that shade and then with the double combo, that would be a, a lot of damage. Yeah, but right now we are seeing a shield block as well in Aria's hand, so he will have ways to gain um, a bit more health. That is true, and he he, he might not know how. <laughs> <laughs> this is impossible! I can't take it anymore. But what? I like the attitude. It's just, yeah, well... This is my life now. <laughs> there is Keeper. Do you no. Keeper face for two damage and hope that Keeper actually survives? I, I don't know, man. I, I don't think it's going to survive. You just have to silence that. It's terrible. Yeah, you do. You do. I think he has to silence. He still can draw that shade. Or actually, right now he might get, what, 40 mana with the Innervates? Does it change anything? Not really. I don't know, this was one of the most hilarious street trolls I've ever seen in my life, and I've seen a lot of street games. 
Yeah, that's pretty funny. So from Nairia's perspective, like Nairia can probably tell every card. Well, not, not every card, but he, he probably has some kind of idea what's going on. Double combo innervates. Right. That has to be the hand. Yeah. Because normally Druid has the cards to play. It Druid of the Claw, or like Ancient of War, yeah. War. Shade would obviously be there as well. <laughs> yeah, he's going for aggro. Yeah, after seeing that play, Nairia definitely knows that the double combo is a real possibility. Well, right now, double combo is actually 22. No. And uh, it's even 23 next turn because there will be two extra mana. Yep, Nairia for sure is going to be careful here. There is no Warsong for Nairia, so he can't really charge his minions. He needs to deal with the Keeper. Um, probably Shield Block, why not? Just gain 5 health and stop any shenanigans that can happen from Skaka's side. Yeah, I kind of like that. Even though, even the world, we just go face with the Death Spite, get those 4 patrons. The death rattle from the death spite is going to deal one damage to the keeper, and the whirlwind from his hand is going to deal another point. Even lets him go face with the emperor. Is there anything that Oskaka can pick up to deal this one extra damage? No. Because Nairia is going to armor up. Or play the ghoul. Or the ghoul. Well, the ghoul gets the job done as well. Oh, but no! He has it if he gets a wrath, right? If he has a wrath, if he, he gets has a wrath, yeah. he actually wins. But he has another spell. That's the second force. But he he played both of the wraths, right? I think he played two. I yeah, I'm not sure. I think I, I've seen one for sure. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, been. he did play uh, two because he played yeah. one and two, Frolling Berserker, and then right. So that, that was not really a possibility. But if there was another wrath in there, it could have been that because twelve mana is what you need for the combo double combo. Yeah, and uh, from the second inner rate to extra, would have been perfect. So now the question is, can he survive? One more turn and use only Force of Nature. I uh, try to go on board. <laughs> I don't see it. Wild growth into Azure Drake into Swipe. You know what Swipe? I don't see it. it but <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, uh, it. Okay, it's possible. If he gets a Swipe, he might get a chance. Oh. But it's a Pilot Shredder. Finally, he's getting minions when he wanted the spell. Yeah, it's a little bit late for us. And Innervate Skaka concedes. Con <laughs> Innervate's out to concede. And, uh, Innervate game, concede? <laughs> game one going out in area. Oh man, what a game. What a draw from most cards. That's it's Druid for you. That's, that's pretty rough, yeah. So like Druid is one of the hardest decks to counter because it's so consistent. Yeah. But even though Oskaka was consistently drawing spells. Yeah, I mean, it's a card game. You can you can draw only spells with any, any class. That was not, a, not necessarily a Druid thing would happen. That's true. But I like the attitude, like both players are like, yeah, this is Hearthstone, like, yeah. sometimes you just get that, that bad hand and you have to live with it. That was only game one, and we are only getting started here. Nadia off to a great start, but he needs to pick up a couple more of more wins. And that's why we play Conquest format, where right. you actually have to win three games to win the match. It's not like you, you lose once and you're out. Uh, Oskaka still in a good position, he has to win with uh, the, the, the last three decks. And uh, what do you think is the, stand, uh, the position of the Dragon Priest? In this yeah, lineup, it's pretty bad. Uh, like I guess Venaria does have the handlock. Even though the handlock is tweaked in, in a way where there's two big game hunters, those big game hunters are not going to be useful. But the deck is still excellent against the priest. Those twilight tricks are so hard to deal with. Best thing you can do is like shrink meister into shadow over pain, but that's still not that efficient. And you need to draw them at the right moment. But on the other hand, there is the patron, and dragon priest is actually pretty good versus patron. I, or would you say I, it's... I don't know. I mean, some people say that it, it, it's quite all right, but personally, I don't think it's very strong because the patron has a lot of tools. Those weapons allow dealing with the minions early on, and eventually, just the, the OTK with the one turn kill will happen. So, would you say it's actually um, favoring patron? I would say so. Yes, I know that some people disagree, but in order for the priest to win, I feel like the priest has to curve out nicely. Go one, two, three, four. Have those dragons to get the buffs on the on the Vermeer's agent and the. Twilight Guardian, that type of stuff. That would be an interesting game to see, but we are going to see game number two is Handlock, Demon Handlock from Nairia versus Green Patron from Ostkaka. Now, yeah, Ostkaka really doesn't have that many tools against this Handlock deck of Nairia's. Both the Priest and this Warrior are extremely good matchups for him. So, what does uh, Ostkaka need to do to win this? Well, he needs to throw the combo piece and do it early enough. He needs to be able to deal with the early threats as well, or Nairia has to whiff on the draws and not find the threats for early turns. Sometimes the handlock just defeats itself. When you don't have a play for turn four, maybe no, no Twilight Drake, no Mountain Giant. If you have none of that, it can be tough to uh, kind of pressure enough early on. And that will be justice. 
if right now Naria gets a bad hand, no Giants, no Twilight Drake, just gets the spells, big him hunters, that would be just, right? Yeah. It's like the best of five turning turning into a best of three in a way. Yeah. And so far, he doesn't have any. That's true. Oh, wow. And it actually might happen. Oskaka actually has the Ac Acolyte of Pain and Enrage as well. Um, yeah. Is he going to drop the Dread Corsair? Nope. Why did he go for Fireworks and no Acolyte of Pain? Is he just keeping the Enrage for Patron on turn five? That's a risky play. But... Wow. There's a big game under. Not going to get much done. But why not play it? I mean, there's not going to be anything to... It's unlikely there's going to be anything to hunt later on either. It's possible. Sometimes the, sometimes the Frotting gets up to 7 power when it's played for tempo. Played early on without the combo, but uh, it, it's, it's quite rare. And this interesting line of play um, from Oskaka, just getting the fireworks earlier. Yep. Be able to deal damage. Then he will be able to play Frotting later as well with no charges. He doesn't have the... the well, not Frotting, the Death Spite. He doesn't have Death Spite in his hand yet. But uh, using the fireworks already is pretty, pretty good. All right, well, uh, no threat from Naria, but uh, that was a decent turn. De <coughs> decent turn, anyway. Yeah, that's true. Got to silence the card draw and getting a one for one with the Dark Bomb on the Trade Cursor. Oskaka is still looking for some card draw. He has the Shield Block and he has the Slam. Nothing really he can slam unless he places or an Arm Smith. Oh, yeah. Just starting with Shield Block is pretty good. Oskaka still needs to draw a lot. From an area to get the silence on the Acolyte is quite a big deal here. Oskaka probably not really happy with his hand for now. He does have Execute, which is great versus Handlock. You can execute mm -hmm. one of the minions. But actually, uh, what you prefer to do is kill uh, the big threat with your own minions or weapons. You want to keep Execute for later turns where the right. Modern Giants are showing up or there is uh, a second or third threat. I mean, if you can, sure you will, but quite often you have to execute the first threat that, uh, that comes out. Unfortunately for Neria, he didn't have any. But he's still in a good shape because Oskaka isn't putting any pressure for now. Oh yeah, and he just picked up the Emperor Torison from the top, so that definitely will help. Oskaka not doing anything, so Neria can read into that that there are combo, uh, combo pieces and spells that he blocked, so he got a lot of information from the turn. Both players with pretty bad draws. Those are the, one of the most interesting games, actually. When both players have mediocre draws, they have to use their skill uh, to make those, those good decisions to be able to get an edge. Oh, absolutely. I love it when, uh, when bo either both players have good hands or both players ba have bad hands, because uh, then it's fair. Sometimes if one, one of the players has just so much better of a hand, it, it, it's, it kind of feels unfair, and maybe it's not even that entertaining to watch. Like you, you're a druid and you draw only spells? Yeah, like that, yeah. All right, so on Oskaka's side, he can finally slam to draw some cards. He's looking for his own Emperor Torison, maybe Frotting Berserker. Yeah, that's why it would be fine to... That's why it would be nice to deal with the board and continue pressuring. But in any case, starting off with the slam, draws another card. Let's see what he picks up. Oh, yeah, well, not as good as Death Spite, but it still like, deals with the Emperor. He still has one war in effect. So if he picks something like an Rage or a second war effect, like Death Spite, as you mentioned, would be great. But if he gets an unstable goal, maybe? Oh, yeah. There's the armor up and... Is he executing a lot of... Wow. It seems like a wasted execute, but this Kaka is in a position where he needs to clear the board. He needs to give himself enough time to draw more cards. I don't know if it's a wasted execute necessarily. He might have figured out that, okay, Naria does not have any giants just yet. So he's taking kind of a... Uh, like an educated gamble in a way where... Uh, just, just taking the risk since it seems so unlikely. There is the death spite. Yep, there it is, but already has that fiery war axe. Neria has a Doom God waiting and Ostkaka just used his Execute on that low tap. So the Doom Guard, there, there's no easy way to deal with the Doom Guard for now. True. Well, we know it's a Doom Guard, but from Oskaka's perspective, it can be Mulganis and can sure. be a second Void Caller or, or Jaraxxus. Jaraxxus. Yep. But there's no way around it. Void Caller has to die at some point. P Patron has no silence to the deck, so you have to kill the minion. I guess. He, he could just take it slow here if he wanted to, I suppose, because there's only five power in the board. All right, and... Uh, there's the Doom cut. No discards happening this time. The charge kind of gets wasted, but still pretty good. 
Yeah, Oskaka still has time, and right now he has the second war in fact that he was looking for. So next turn he will be able to war song and patron twice. Um, Very right. patron and get the war in fact as well. Right, and there's Malaganis. There is in fact Malaganis and Taunt Givers, heal bots. So Nyria has all the tools. Yep. To protect himself. But Ostkaka still at 25 HP. Mm. Definitely been less pressure than than what uh, what Nyria would would have liked to put put on early on. But only four cards. So if you face Patron, you, you might assume, hey, he might have this war song, frauding, frauding, wherein that will be the best hand possibly. Oh yeah, that's a real possibility. But he knows that uh, Oskaga hasn't been drawing at all, really. So it's kind of unlikely still. All right, for Neria, just deal with the armor smith to stop any possible life gain. You're having yep. a great board. There is a Torison. That yeah, there sure is. Torison into frauding will be interesting. Um, Nairia has what, like 14 points of damage, so Oskaka does not feel threatened. Even with like Dark Bomb, Hellfire, he's still not dead. So he can go with Emperor and Hero Power. We can see the Cream Patrons come out. Everyone get in here. Well, is it going to be enough? I don't, I don't know. Well, it's not enough to, to win the game right now, but he, with this he'll be able to clear, and there are also two minions. True. And Nairia with no Hellfire just yet, or a no, Shadow Flame. No AoE, that's true. None. Not even a Mortal Coil. That's no. a good board extension, and also the fact that he used the Warzone Commander, that was fine, because he has a second one for a possible flooding right. the But he had to do this play, because he was really be, uh, getting behind, and if he just plays Torison, he loses in two turns, possibly, even though there was no lethal, uh, Im no immediate lethal. Right mm -hmm. now, he is the one being aggressive, he is asking questions, can you deal with my board? It seems fairly likely from Ostkaka's point of view that, that Neiria could deal with this, because Neiria had a weak early game, but we know better. There actually isn't anything at all to deal with this. Dark Home could clear one of the 3-3 three, three patrons, but that's not what you want to be doing. Yeah, he deals with Warson Commander because he is afraid of throwing Berserker. Oh, oh my there's the goodness! Rage. That's three cards! And he has 12 points of damage. There's even a chance that he picks up a second battle right here. Nope. With Unstable Ghoul, is that enough? That's, that should be enough because throwing Unstable yeah, it, Ghoul. That is enough. And you can charge. Wow. So on the, on the back of the, the battle rage, she actually gets lethal, and uh, Oskaka is going to take game number two versus Nairia. With the patience, frauding Warsong. That's a really nice combo that Xavit. Oh yeah, I, I think I might have seen this before. <laughs> a couple of times. I like, you know, I like the fact there's a combo deck, so GG to Oskaka. Uh, we haven't, uh, we haven't uh, seen that many combo decks before in Hearthstone, yeah. so, you know, Patron makes a difference. It's extremely skill-intensive, too. There's so many things you can do with it if you're experienced, if you're smart about how to use your... when to use the right cards, when do you execute something, when to save your world, when... There's a lot of things. You really need to know all the matchups, and watching somebody like Ostkaka pilot the deck is just simply a pleasure. Absolutely. And I think that's the third time we're seeing uh, Patron winning versus Handlock. Maybe we've seen it a couple more times, but overall, the matchup, would you say matchup is good for Handlock or Patron? I would say that it's good for Handlock, and statistics also back that up. Handlock is around 75% favorite against pat Patrons. All right. But this time around, it was the Patrons. Yeah, apparently yeah. today Patrons Sorry. are having a good day. So, uh, Warrior is out for Skaka, and Warrior is out for Nerea. We're going to see Warlocks. Warlock, Druid, Druid, uh, Druid Priest. Yep. What Definitely. do you take now? Definitely favors Nairia. That priest should be, uh, should be kind of tricky here. I, it hasn't been doing that well against Druids either. We've seen Oskaka play it a couple of times, and I think he played it twice against Druids and lost both of the times. Well, maybe this time he's going to win because I think versus Druid, it still has a chance. It's absolutely not 100% win rate for Druids with the priest. If you have a good curve, if you play Twilight Guardian early, if you have the dragons for Black Link Raptor, you can actually set up a big board as priest. And then what can Druid really do to deal with a big board? That is true. To get some early draws. The problem that Priest is facing, even if Nerea, uh, if Skaka takes the early board, there is no burst to finish the game. Another horrible draw from Nerea. 
But he will still have plenty of time before that turn four. He can pick up either Void Caller, Mountain Giant, or Twilight Drake. Those are the six cards that he's really looking for. He's gonna get I believe five draws, uh, three turn cards, and two life taps. So the chances yeah. are pretty good for him. Absolutely. This, that's why Handlock is one of the best decks because you can always uh, life tap some hero power to get those extra cards, even if you get a bad draw. Yep, it's quite consistent. Um, Consistency in comparison to some other decks that uh, <laughs> don't really, can't really draw the cards like that early on. And the matchup still is very good for, for Nairia. So Priest was originally a really bad versus Warlock. Uh, what would you say changed with the Dragon Priest? What changed with the Dragon Priest versus Handlock? Is it, is it better now uh, than the standard Control Priest? I, I don't think so. I think it's also pretty bad. It's just Priest in, in general. Priest is really bad at the closing out game, so playing around Molten Giants is one of the main problems. And also the Twilight Tricks, those four twos. There's no silences in the, in the regular list. It's really hard to deal with those tricks and uh, play around the Molten Giants. There's, I feel like there's a lot of things that just favor the handlock quite a bit. I think one of the key cards that Priest is running is Light Bomb. So then maybe if Priest is aggressive enough, Handlock will be afraid to play Molten Giants, just maybe play one. But I agree with you. Most of the, most of the games actually finish with Jaraxxus being played at some point. And yeah. then Priest just has no answers. Yeah, against the Priest, you can sometimes even rush out the Jaraxxus and not play your Molten Giants at all if you, haven't, if you didn't throw those in time. The, the Infernals getting spammed every single turn is something that the Priest can't really deal with for long. After the Jaraxxus is played, the Priest just has to try to end the game quickly and... Like I said, it's <laughs> Priest is bad at ending games fast. Right now, uh, Oskaka is struggling with the early game as well. He can kill the 4-1, he can heal the 6. Uh, another clunky draw from this Priest deck. We have seen it quite a, quite a few times. Yeah, that's true. What do you even do? Like, you can't play the Whelp, you need the Dragon for turn 5 for Black and Corruptor and whatever other dragon-related cards you're going to draw. Double Shadow War Death is uh, nice. If there will be a giant, there is no giant coming from Nairia. I think that the only real option here is whether he wants to go for Valence Chosen or the Hero Power after killing off the big game hunter. I like the Hero Power. Yeah, I think so too. The Valence Chosen, it feels a bit off. Because then you can't Hero Power at all. And you can't just like Valence and then go face because right. it doesn't no, do no, anything. No. Doesn't accomplish anything at all. It only gets the wall closer to the Molten Chains. He's going to go for the Valence Chosen, but is he, is he really going to go for face? Wow! I said that I was wrong. Oskaka is going for face with that. So the reasoning behind... Can you explain the reasoning? Is he going to be aggressive because his hand is bad? I guess he figures that um, Neiria is very likely to be making the trades anyway and one owl is already played, so... It's like no real downside in going to face, but it's, I just don't see the upside of going face because of those molten giants. But I'm gonna be, I'm, I'm really in interested to see how this plays out. All right, Oskaka was absolutely, as you said, hoping to, to see some trades. Well, right now he is the one with the bigger minions. Yep. It's doing all right. Neria here. He had the option to play the mountain giant, but he opts to go for the life tap instead, getting the shadow flame. Being able to clear the board, and now Ostkaka stuck with only reactive cards. Well, the long game favors Nairia, because Nairia will be able to play those big threats <laughs> and that Priest is struggling to defeat. Uh, he will get to Jaraxxus eventually. Now, yeah, Ostkaka can also play his threats, but they're not so big. <laughs> well, that's why I whelp. That's for the power word shields, just for the cycle, and another reactive wow. situation with card. Yeah. Just Zero getting... pressure. Forest Kaka. Yep, there we are just going to keep life tapping every single turn, getting closer to those Molten Giants, trying to find the Twilight Tricks and other things that, <laughs> that you, you want against Priest. Well, the good news is for Skaka that if Nairia plays those Giants, he has ways to deal with them. And now he gets the Agent without the Dragon in his hand. Yeah, just playing <laughs> this Dragon is so brutal. Could you think about the worst draw? Not really, no. I mean, another Twilight well, well maybe? <laughs> At least he deals with the, uh, with the Doom Garden. Yeah, that's, that's something. Absolutely. Goes for face, no fear about the Molden Giants. 
Maybe with all that pressure from this Twilight Whelp, Nairia will consider conceding. <laughs> right. Just dragons are coming for me, what can I do? Yeah, Ostkake does have that second shadow or death in his hand, so that's definitely something that uh, makes him more comfortable going for that face so, so aggressively. But the problem is when there is a second threat after that shadow word. Right, so. yeah. Because Nairia does have two more giants. He doesn't just, just have the mountain, but he also has a second, second giant in the form of the mountain giant. Or somewhere in the deck there is Light Bomb and Vol'jin as well. Yep. So maybe Oskaka will live long enough. The <laughs> second agent and no dragons. I don't, I don't think Ostkaka is meant to win this series, looking at these draws. It's, that, is, that is very, very unfortunate, to he's, say the least. He's not dead yet. No. There will be an only Druid uh, remaining for Inaria. And Priest can win versus Druid. But I have to say that if Ostkaka manages to pull this off, it's going to be quite impressive. You know, if you are unlucky in two series, you should get good draws in the third one. For three times the charm. I don't think it works like that. You should. Okay. <laughs> you know, the shuffling of the decks and everything. Right. I'm not buying that. <laughs> yeah, but right now he's trying to, to do the best uh, out of the situation. Decides to shadow ward the giant. Clear the board and continue dealing damage. Yeah. The damage just piles up. So Maria goes to 12 already. And the string monster. That's actually one of the cards that may have bit of potential, like help just cock out. If he, if he was to draw a couple of Shadow Priest from the top, he could have potentially stolen the Twilight, Twilight check. Yeah. But he doesn't have the Kabal yet, so we can't blame him for just playing it here. It would have been a different situation if he had the Kabal. And Naria just happily going with the Twilight Jake on one Molten Giant. Uh, you don't play two because of the possible Light Bomb that is in Ostkaka's deck. You don't want to overextend. But even though he is at 9 health, he is happy about it. He feels untouchable. Yep, Ostkaka finally picking up an Azure Trek. That was the card he needed on any of the, the previous few turns. But it's still good. But it Na might be too late. Naria is thinking, are you mocking me? What are you playing? This is turn 9. Two Forest Taunt, they don't do anything. Uh, Neria can't really deal with that spell power all that well. He could silence one of the rumorous agents and, uh, and kill off the, the, um, the Azure Drake if he really wants to. But I'm not sure if he's going to go for that. The Owl Her might be even more valuable to keep for later on, but I can't really blame him if he chooses to do this. I think it's absolutely fine versus uh, this kind of deck. If you would play versus Control, uh, priest, then you can be afraid uh, of the Okanai Soul Priest. Right. But right now you're mostly afraid uh, 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 of Holy Nova with this spell damage. So oh, yeah. that was a really great play. And this Molten Giant is not even dying to Blackwing Corruptor. Ooh, it's happening but last. Tiny mistake there, but uh, it shouldn't really matter. Actually, it will die to, Bla uh, to Corruptor. Wow, there is Vol'jin, so he can Vol use the Holy Nova. Holy Nova, yeah. That's not bad. Doesn't mean that it's gonna help him enough, but it, it does help him a little bit. But what do you really steal? You have to. You don't gotta you do have it to target the, the giant? No, you gotta do it on the Drake. The Drake has too much HP. The, the giant, even though it's still there, it's still uh, 8 attack, it, it's down to 2 HP. So it should be something you can deal with a little bit later. Skaka just left with his Twilight Well. Can he do anything? <laughs> <laughs> I want to say yes, but I'm going to say no. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> All right, so Naria can kill the 6 7 with the giant. He can play another giant and then play okay, the Fieldbot as well. Let's try to find ways for Skaka to climb back in this. Maybe Yusera, if he plays Yusera. Have you seen Yusera from your Skaka? If he gets that and gets an awakens from it? Um, th that's absolutely something, and then he gets the Light Bomb to clear, right, the, right. clear the board. Pale Tress? Maybe, can King Crush from it? Yeah, uh, that, I, I can see that happening. But I, I don't think we've seen a Pale Tress at least. And we've no. seen this deck quite a few times today. I don't think he, he plays it. No, I can't quite even remember if he plays Yusera either. He can Light Bomb the board and then develop a dragon. He can. But that doesn't do anything. I wouldn't be too surprised if he held down to the light bomb here, hoping for an area to overcome it. Would you play the, the wealth, or would you just keep it for a possible Corruptor? I think you keep it for Corruptor. And maybe a Twilight Guardian as well. The 2-1 just doesn't do anything. 
And it also gives it away that you have nothing, nothing more in your hand, because then Ostkaka's hand would be empty, and Neria could uh, just freely play anything that he wants and doesn't have to worry about uh, playing around a particular card. Absolutely. Well, we can see how relaxed Neria is with his yeah. health. He knows that Priest has no absolute burst. We mentioned Isera with maybe Nightmare. Uh, there is Corruptor. Yeah. I'm actually a tiny bit surprised that he chose to go for the Giant over the, over the Emperor. Because it seemed likely that he would get multiple effects off from it. And it's only three attack and three toughness it smaller. Like he wants to uh, speed up the game a bit. With the Giant, he's going to deal a bit more damage. And yeah. he's seen Double Shot War Death, he's seen Light Bomb. So. Yeah. He's seen Vol Vol'jin, like, what is going to contest that Giant? Right. But there is an answer, like, the Black Mink Raptor actually does contest the Giant a bit. Kinda. But Neiria can buff its toughness by one with the uh, Defender of Argus. Yeah, or he might just ignore the, the Corruptor and play Twilight Drake, Ancient Watcher, and Defender of Argus. Still tapping! Wow. No regrets, he goes down to six. Yeah, he's well aware that Ostkaka doesn't play much or any burst in his deck. Well, if you go down to six, you probably kill the 5 4, but. Yep, and he does. Holy Nova. All it does is kill that giant off and, and do damage to face. How meaningful is to do to face? If Ostkaka plays one Mind Blast. No, he does not <laughs> play any Mind Blast, if he did. So is Holy Nova the only, uh, the last burst card? We've seen double Corruptor, we've seen double Holy Nova. I think it very well might be. I wouldn't expect to see a... Oh, oh there is wow. Jiraxus, finally. He was that, looking for yeah, it the whole game. Yeah, you can see the Neria's face there. He, got really, he was really relieved to be healing up back to 50. There's no way he can lose the game from here on out. And, and that's it. Neria takes game number three and gets the lead over Skaka 2-1. Two Neria left with uh, Druid. Yeah, kind of, that was kind of what was expected. Knowing the class, it's, it's so heavily favors the handlock. And now Skaka is struggling with that Priest. Now we're, gonna, now we're probably going to see that against... Druid. Neria's Druid, yeah. Yeah, so Neria with the Druid, Askaka with the Priest, and uh, his own Druid, I believe. Or... Yep, his own Druid. All right. I mean, this can go either in either order, but if you Askaka, does it matter at all which one do you queue up first? Uh, it doesn't matter, because if you go with the Priest, if you, yeah. you still need the win with the Priest, you just play with the Priest, so you're uh, well comfortable just uh, yeah. playing the same deck. And both of the decks are also like revealed already, so absolutely. Unless there is maybe some weird deck, no. But if you lose, it doesn't matter anyway. Yeah, it's going to be out. So just take the priest, try to get the win versus um, mm -hmm. the druid deck, and then just uh, druid versus druid is a coin flip. Whoever gets the ram. Uh, well, there are some keys that you can really influence the game by good decisions, but mostly mirror matches are mirror matches, 50-50 chance. That's right. And that's still good odds for Skaka, I believe. So as, as long as he wins the Priest vs. Druid uh, game, he might be in a good position to take the series. Right, but he has to win it first. That's true, that's true. All right, so possibly Priest vs. Druid. You said that Priest can win it. Do you think it's 50-50 or is it maybe Druid is favored? I don't know. I used to think that it, it's, it would be even better for the Priest, but after seeing it play out a little bit, the Priest seems so reactive. It's so hard. He might draw the wrong cards at the wrong time. Well, Whereas all the Druid has to really worry about is drawing the right mana cost cards in those minions. Because it, it tends to be the Druid making the plays and the Priest reacting to those plays. So, wow, and there's a Wild Growth from Neria stra straight off the top. Wild Growth into Shade of Maxramas. With the coin, that's amazing start for Neria. And what Oskaka is looking for, he wants to get a Dragon, which is something like Twilight Guardian, maybe Astro Drake. He doesn't want Isara yet. Yeah. And then he wants. Um, some draw and um, maybe Wormless Agent to have the curve and be aggressive. What do you think about keeping the Azure Drake or the, or the Druid of the Claw? So I like it. Because I think at least Azure Drake is so powerful against Priest. Priest is kind of slow. Druid of the Claw also, they're getting a 5 mana, 4, 6. It's quite difficult for a Priest to deal with. There is no Shadow Bird 4. I think I like Druid of the Claw more because if there is a Wormless Agent and if, if Oskaka gets Valence Chosen, 
Okay. That has four attack. So Azure Jake might be threatened. Uh, also, if he just keeps them and decides to wild grow first with the coin, he has uh, shade on two. But then there is uh, turn three where he has four mana and he can't play anything unless he draws into something. Right. So depending on what he's going to draw, uh, he might make a decision. But uh, I would not be opposed to keeping Druid of the Claw in the opening hand. Fair enough. He does throw away both the Druid of the Claw and the Azure Drake. Gets, instead, he gets a big Game Hunter and an Inner Wait. So it's going to be a board battle. If Priest, if Oskaka is able to take over the board and establish a couple of minions, and if he has a dragon, the Twilight Corruptor can be deadly, and just having tempo advantage, he's going to finish the game. But once again, Oskaka with no dragon in his hand. How often have we seen this? How many dragons does he even play? Double Twilight Guardian, double Azure Drake, that's four. Isera, that's five. Is that it? Just uh, five? Whelps, seven. Why? Oh, the Whelps. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think so seven dragons seven. is fine. Maybe you would like to play eight. I'm not sh exactly sure which dragons he's playing. Yeah, it seems to be happening. Once again, Ostkaka with a clunky draw. He needs some help, and he needs it quick. <laughs> he's, is he just going to play the agent with power or shield? He might. He, he needs some draw. Yeah, he wants to cycle the power shield. He might also go for the Shrinkmeister with the power shield. That's a little bit bad, because then it just dies to that sh shade of Max Ramos. But on the other hand, you, you, you might feel like, okay, well, I have to cycle here. I need to find something for turn four. Maybe a, something like Twilight Guardian or if he goes anything, the, basically. If he goes for the Shrinkmeister, it will deal three damage to the Shade, so Shade will be at one. Right. Then on four, Shade will be at five. And so like, he, Shade will ex escape the, the Holy Nova. That's why there was no need to play the yeah. It's fairly tricky for a priest to deal one damage to the shade after. Oh, there's the Twilight Garden. There is a dragon, finally. <laughs> but, again, but no like more dragons! Twilight Garden! second dragon. Another battle cry that's not oh, working man. because of the lack of dragons. Skaka is looking at the screen and thinking, Where are my dragons? Oh, man. So just plays it without the battle cry. Like, Naria is just laughing at it. I was yeah. like, oh, I'm winning this match, no problem. And, and Ostkaka, never lucky. That's true. But it's not like he could queue another deck. Well, he could go with the Druid, but it didn't matter. So, like, Priest had to win one match. It's, this is not over yet. No, it's not over at all. But, but he doesn't have what he wanted. Yeah. And he sometimes nice top decks here. If, if he gets something like a Light Bomb, manages to get a full clear with it, uh, anything can happen. Yeah, if Nairia is not careful and plays more minions, but what are you two being Nairia? Do you, are you even concerned about this uh, agent and, and the dragon? Well, maybe a little bit. But it doesn't look too scary. Honestly, I would not hate Hero Parface. No Alright, I think he's going to clear both of the minions here. Using the 3-3 three, three on that Twilight Garden, using the 5 on the agent and... Uh, that does do it. All right, makes sense. So Osaka right now is able to kill one of them at least. Oh yeah, with the, either the Holy Nova or the Wild Pyromancer so Shadow Bird Pain. Next, oh, if he only had one more mana, he could go for the Wild Pyro Shrinkmeister and the Shadow Bird Pain on that mm. on that three four. Now he's probably just going to shrink and uh, and pain that annoying five four shade. That makes sense. Yeah, I think it's pretty good. That the remaining shade is down to two HP, so he should be able to deal with it a little bit later. A wild pyro monster um, was also a possibility because that will force a hero power, so engine of law with coin would not be dropped. But then, on the other hand, Oskaka can know that there is an engine of law just waiting. For people. Right. And without this free two contest, the shade anyway. Does he think about the trade here? The downside of going for phase is that there could be a valence chosen coming or. Big corruptor with no dragons. Where there is a holy, <laughs> there is a holy nova. So Oskaka can't deal with it. Works, yeah, that's true. But yep. Nairia still with the initiative. He's going to get to play a new new set of minions on an empty board. Still no dragons, as you mentioned. <laughs> Harrison Jones card is mostly useless versus priest, but it has five attack. Yeah, it, it, it usually gets a one for one anyway. Honestly, Nairia's hand doesn't seem that great. Nope. But it's still better than Oskaka's. It is, yeah. Plays one of the Cabals. Six mana, Chilvignetti. 
he has to cycle that shield. And getting that 4 or 7, I mean, it's pretty strong, I have to say. Yeah, that's absolutely good. Uh, and the great for his character, he was able to draw the, the buff. Because just playing a 4 5 into the 5 4 doesn't feel good. Yeah. I mean, it's not amazing to get a 7 mana 4 7, but it's still something. There is Darnus' Aspirant for Nyria. So with that, he just. Uh, that was an okay draw. He was able to deal with the minion and uh, even extend his board position. Yeah. Not too bad. <laughs> Light Bomb is still not a dragon. Nope. Not even close. Blackwing Corruptor would be great on the Aspirant here, but yeah, obviously it's not going to work out. Like, second Cabal comes down. He's actually going to steal the Aspirant just to get rid of it. That's like a dream for Nyria. Yeah, but at this point, they have both have so much mana already that losing that mana crystal, it's not all that meaningful. Snaria slowly grinding Oskaka down, but on the other hand, he's only left with Keeper and Big Game Hunter. Those cards are not great and do, don't do that much. Uh, yeah. Oskaka doesn't run any creatures that, are, that can be targeted by the Big Game Hunter, so it's just going to be a 4 2 creature. Nyria going for face again with the Tharis and leaving up the minion. I'm not sure if, how much I like it because there could be that Valence Chosen coming in. Yeah, that one. There is the villain chosen. And so this is going to allow Ostkaka to at least get some kind of decent play. Is there any possible... There is no clear. Like, if you Light Bomb with Pyromancer... No, it doesn't work like that. The Wild Barrow is going to die before it, it does them. Oh yeah, okay, effect. because it kills itself and then it doesn't trigger. Right. You can Light Bomb with Valence Chosen. They could. How it doesn't clear, it's yeah, it it just that they deal free damage to themselves. I think you just well and chosen, kill off the Harrison and then draw from the minion. It's a bit scary, leaving those two minions on the board, healing, healing a minion instead of healing himself. Oh, he's gonna go for the light bomb. So light that's bomb. gonna be a cleric then. Yeah, okay. that's true. Not bad at all. This way there's one less minion. And Neria only with a big cam hunter in his hand, so... <laughs> actually, if he gets a uh, dragon, that's double Corruptor next turn. It is, it is, it actually is, but we already know, okay, no, I, I feel like I already know that he's not going to draw it. There, and feel no dragons. The, the draws from most Kaka in this series have been absolutely ridiculous. Well, but this single draw, if he gets a dragon right now, he oh, can actually yeah. turn around the series. <laughs> absolutely. Can Kaka do it? Is there any Sarah? That's Volgy, no! On a scale of 1 to 10, how dragon is that? <laughs> That's minus 2. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so you watch in the planet shredder. Well, this is really intriguing. You don't even have the spells to deal with this board. It's pretty annoying, yeah. Domesayer time? Do you no, go for the thing? I mean, Oskaka, on the bright side, he does have 5 cards in his hand, and he sees that Neria has none. But a, a turn is going to be awkward one way or another. Oh man. Alright, so Pyro, Pyro Monster Valence into the 2-1. Two, two no, actually, you 2-1 the 4-2, you Pyro Monster Valence, that kills the 2-1, two, two and then you heal face. Well, like, I think he's gonna go for a Corruptor afterwards. You should <gasps> attack. Unless no, you buff first. the 1. No, okay. I thought he was going to trade that out. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, no, it's gonna die, but not quite. We're watching European Championships, Savit. Yeah, I know. I might, of course, you're just trading that for the four two, and then using the balance on the on the wild parameters. That's why I got confused because I was like looking at a different play than the one that he chose. Sure. Area gets one part of the combo, force of nature. If he gets, uh, he doesn't even need savage roar. There is a dragon. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a dragon from the top of Ostkaka's deck. Finally, after all those years, he's able to get the dragon and get the crafters. That's a parrot. Yep. But Neria won Savage Roar. So all there, from is, lethal. there is a chance. There is actually a chance uh, for Ostkaka to turn around this game if only Neria doesn't draw a Savage Roar. Yep. There is a White Grove. That's Not a blind. Yet, at least. How many bad shores are there left for an area? Uh, I think a couple. Yeah, there's probably a couple. Something, even like a big minion, something like Ancient of, uh, of War is not cutting it. 
drew it off the claw. If you drew it off the claw and hero power to the face, he can actually... Can, can he set up a plate? Hold on, that's five, so he puts him down to six, so it's not quite enough. But something like Keeper of the Crow would now also do it. Keeper of the Crow or Swipe. He is double... Is he is double Swipe? Well, well, that is a dragon as well, but... It is. It, it is. doesn't work here. Oh, that's... Nairia has a couple of odds, but right now Oskaka is setting up lethal for the next turn. That's interesting. I was thinking about Doc. Uh, that, um, Twilight Guardian, it wouldn't have been taunt anymore after that, but he wouldn't have that those extra, extra stats on the Twilight Valve. And Nairia with a lot of draws for the lethal here. Swipe, Keeper of the Crow. Can he draw into drawer. something? There is oh, second force, it's not enough! Force? How much damage is he looking at? So he has to do at least a little bit of clearing here. But he can set Ostkaka down to... Hold on, he can set him down to 5 HP. So for the next, he can clear off one of the 5 4s. He can set down Ostkaka down to 5 HP. So even after the hero power, freeze hero power, which is going to put him down up to 7, the second force of nature combined with the hero power would be lethal. And there is 11. So now it's actually Ostkaka who needs to draw a good card here in order to survive. And that's and he not it! He doesn't. If he would get the Twilight Garden, it would not be enough. Twilight Garden has no taunts. Is, was there any burst for him? Not really. That's going to be it. That's going to be the series. So Ostkaka had the chance to come back, but it wasn't enough. Yeah, no, no hunter, unfortunately, for Ostkaka in Nairia's lineup. And we have our first finalist. It's going to be Nairia from Team Liquid. He doesn't know it yet, but we do, and uh, now he knows it as well. Now he has my greetings. I do have my second force of nature. He gets the lore, it doesn't matter. He goes with it, and uh, with the hero power, there's a galaxy seven points of damage. Now we advance to the finals of the European Championship. That's, that, that was uh, an interesting series. Yo, look at that, only four HP on Nerea. What a close game. Yeah. Otskaka had a chance. He really had us one widow of opportunity. Oh, yeah. And um, he did draw a dragon in the end. I almost want to call that deck Ostkaka's No Dragon deck. Uh, Ostkaka's No Dragon deck? He had No Dragon Priest. No Dragon it? Priest. I like it. It's a good name. He's never drawing them. It's just the Blackwing Corruptors and everything. It just didn't line up at all for him he this time add, around. He should add Nefarian. Right. Just, just throw in like, like five more dragons, just to make sure. Yeah, absolutely. I think like if you play a 30-card deck with dragons, you need around like 15 of them. Yeah. To make it work. Mm. All right, so um, Frodan's here with us, but I really want to, uh, to hear what Nairia has to say, and is he happy about this victory? Let's see, Rachel. Thanks, guys. We're doing a little shuffle down here on the stage. That's how excited Nairia is. Now, I know when we said that you had a couple more matches to play, you were smiling less than usual. But you are now one step closer to taking home not just the title of Europe Hearthstone champion, but $10,000. How about that? Um, I'm playing this match not optimal. Uh, I misplayed last game, uh, like not trading into 2-1 when it kills just BGH. It was just stupid for me. But yeah, I'm happy for that. But I'm more happy that I'm attending BlizzCon. So it's like a, a really good bonus. It's a really good bonus. And, and you know what? Despite the fact that, that you said maybe you didn't play optimally, when we saw you on the camera, you had a smile on your face the whole time. I mean, and you were, you were using the emotes more than anybody else this tournament. So are you enjoying yourself here at the tournament? No, it was just like uh, I had fun playing these games. I, I didn't... Uh, like, I didn't focus that much like at previous games. So it was just like, for fun, go smork, face, more than usual. Hey, I'll cheer for fun. Why don't we give it up for our qualifier? He's going on to the finals tomorrow. Nuria, great job to you. I'm going to hand it back to our casters. And we have one more match for you guys, so don't go anywhere. That's right, Rachel Nairi is the first finalist. Uh, congratulations, and another opportunity for him to prove that, you know, last year wasn't exactly a good representative of what he could do. And uh, as a teammate him uh, on Team Liquid Savits, it's a very cool thing to see uh, come true. What, what do you think was the missing link? You know, I, I felt like in the very beginning we said that he was one of the unluckiest players we've seen historically on stream, but uh, was that just a trend or was there something more to it? I think he was just on a, on a bad streak. There is some, it, it's a card game that we are playing, so there is some 
some randomness involved in simply how, what, in what order you draw your cards. And I think a lot of the tournaments that Neria earlier this year didn't go his way. He was still playing quite well. It's just like things didn't work out. But I'm so happy that yeah, now on the big stage, this is the exact moment. If you have to pick one time to be running good, this is it. Well, this and maybe BlizzCon itself. And maybe right? BlizzCon, yeah. yeah but maybe you, have to, you have to do this, uh, this first, or you're not going to be at BlizzCon. Sure, sure. Uh, and then coming up here, we have Tice versus Life Coach. Uh, you know, that's going to be a really cool matchup as well. But I believe, uh, you know, Savitz, you won't actually be casting that match. What, what do you think about that matchup to wrap up the day here? I'm going to be watching that one. That's, that, that's all I have about that. I think it's going to be a really cool match. They prepare together so they know each other's strategies and they know what's, what's going to happen. And it's, it's going to be interesting. I, I don't have a favorite for that. I think both of them are amazing players and it's just going to be a, it's, it's going to be a pleasure to watch. I think it's going to be really interesting if Life Coach plays Nairia again in the finals and it's like, wow, actually one of the first matches that the groups ends up being the final two players. I think that would be a very poetic story. Uh, although, you know, Tice could easily also just take the series as much uh, as, a, as a very good player. What do yeah, you think, Nimsh? Absolutely. Well, before, before even Life Coach advances to the final, I'm really hyped for the next game because this is like two friends, two teammates who were practicing together, who are uh, happy about uh, both advancing. And right now they're going to face each other. But I think there is like no quarter given. They're, they are going to, to try to win. They're really competitive, both of them. So they are going to give us a good match. All right, well, uh, that wraps up our first semifinal, but we have one more coming up after this break. So don't go anywhere, guys. When we return, we're going to have Tice and Life Coach play for the second final spot. Stay tuned.